We're paying everybody's bills. Let's turn to the issue of democracy. Uh, former President Trump, uh, I want to ask you about January 6, 2021. After you rallied your supporters that day, some of them stormed the Capitol to stop the constitutionally mandated counting of electoral votes. As president, you swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6th and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I don't think too many believe that. And let me tell you about January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now left at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. That what happened to the United States' reputation under this man's leadership is horrible, including weaponization, which I'm sure at some point you'll be talking about, where he goes after his political opponent because he can't beat him fair and square. You have 80 seconds left. My question was, what do you say to those voters who believe that you violated your constitutional oath through your actions and inaction on January 6, 2021, and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I didn't say that to anybody. I said peacefully and patriotically. And Nancy Pelosi, if you just watched the news from two days ago, on tape to her daughter, who's a documentary filmmaker, they say, but she's saying, oh, no, it's my responsibility. I was responsible for this because I offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard, and she turned them down. And the mayor of, in writing, by the way, the mayor, in writing, turned it down, the mayor of, of D.C. They turned it down. I offered 10,000 because I could see I had virtually nothing to do. They asked me to go make a speech. I could see what was happening. Everybody was saying they're going to be there on January 6th. They're going to be there. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of people coming. You could feel it. You could feel it, too, and you could feel it. And I said, they ought to have some National Guard or whatever. And I offered it to her. And she now admits that she turned it down. And it was the same day she was, I don't know, she can't be very happy with her daughter because it made her into a liar. She said, I take full responsibility for January 6th. President Biden. Look, he encouraged those folks to go up on Capitol Hill. Number one, I sat in that dining room off the Oval Office. He sat there for three hours, three hours watching, begging, being begged by his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about these people being patriots and, and, and great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. He'll, they've been convicted. He says he wants to commute their sentences and say that, that no. But he went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases, scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no, this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what is being, that was done. He did do a damn thing. And these people should be in jail. And they should be the ones that are being held accountable. And he wants to let them all out. And now he says if he loses again, such a whiner that he is, that it could be a bloodbath. Thank you, President Biden. President Trump? What they've done to some people that are so innocent, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you have done, how you've destroyed the lives of so many people. When they ripped down Portland, when they ripped down uh, many other cities, you go to Minnesota, Minneapolis, what they've done there with the fires all over the city. If I didn't bring in the National Guard, that city would have been destroyed. When you look at all of the they took over big chunks of Seattle. I was all set to bring in the National Guard. They heard that. They saw them coming, and they left immediately. What he said about this whole subject is so off. Peacefully patriotic. One other thing. The unselect committee, which is basically two horrible Republicans that are all gone now, out of office, and Democrats, all Democrats, they destroyed and deleted all of the information they found because they found out we were right. We were right, and they deleted and destroyed all of the information. They should go to jail for that. If a Republican did that, they'd go to Thank jail. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, I want to give you a minute. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. And the fact of the matter is, he is in, he's, what he's telling you is simply not true. The fact is that there was no effort on his part to stop what was going on. 
up in Capitol Hill. And all those people, every one of those who was convicted, deserves to be convicted. The idea that they didn't kill somebody, just went in and broke down doors, broke the windows, uh, occupied offices, turned over desks, turned them over statues. The idea that those people are patriots? Come on. When I asked them the first two debates we had, the debates we had the first time around, I said, will you denounce the Proud Boys? He said, no, I'll tell them to stand by. The idea he's refusing, to, will you denounce these guys? Will you denounce the people we're talking about now? Will you denounce the people who attacked that capital? What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, give you a, a, a minute, President Trump, for a follow-up question I have. Um, after a jury convicted you of 34 felonies last month, you said if reelected, you would, quote, have every right to go after, unquote, your political opponents. You just talked about members of the select committee on January 6th going to jail. Your main political opponent is standing on stage with you tonight. Can you clarify exactly what it means about you feeling you have every right to go after your political opponents? Well, I said my retribution is going to be success. We're going to make this country successful again, because right now it's a failing nation. My retribution is going to be success. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted, going to be convicted probably numerous other times. Should have been convicted before, but his Justice Department let the statute of limitations lapse on the most important things. But he could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All of the death caused at the, the border, uh, telling the Ukrainian people that we're going to want a billion dollars or you change the prosecutor, otherwise you're not getting a billion dollars. If I ever said that, that's quid pro quo, that we're not going to do anything. We're not going to give you a billion dollars unless you change your prosecutor having to do with the son. This man is a criminal. This man, you're lucky. You're lucky. I did nothing wrong. We'd have a system that was rigged and disgusting. I did nothing wrong. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, I'm coming right to you, sir. You, well, you want to respond? Go ahead. I'll give you a minute to respond. The idea that I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Number two, the idea that you have a right to seek retribution against any American just because you're president is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three, the crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant. I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. We had a very uh, terrible judge, a horrible judge, Democrat, the prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats, appointed people, and the, both the civil and the criminal. He basically went after his political opponent because he thought it was going to damage me. But when the public found out about these cases, because they understand them better than he does, he has no idea what these cases are. But when, he, the, when they found out about these cases, you know what they did? My poll numbers went up way up. You know that because you're reporting it. And we took in more money in the last two weeks than we've ever taken in in the history of, of any campaign. I don't think any campaign has ever taken. Hundreds of millions of dollars came pouring in because the public knows it's a scam and it's a guy that's after his political opponent because he can't win fair and square. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, quote, 